but space is hard. May I suggest that that become the new Space Force motto? This cast is out of this world. How did you both get involved in this series and how did they pitch it to you? Um, it started uh, for me. I just uh, I'd done this uh, show. We were Americanizing the show called The Wrong Man's, and uh, we did a pilot for Showtime, and it just ended. And the day after we found out it wasn't getting picked up was the day they're like, "Hey, do you want to audition for Space Force?" Which for me, uh, as I've told John, is if it was just Greg Daniels, I would be in. If it was just John, I would be in. If it was just Steve, I would be in. And the idea that it was all three of them. Uh, it was a show that I knew I would be watching every second of, and I'd be bummed out if I couldn't be a part of it. So I really want to be part of it. That's kind of how it started. I auditioned, talked to Greg during the audition that we want to make it separate from John Ralphio. And I lucked, I lucked out that I was able to get the role. What about you, John? Uh, for me, more or less the same. Um, I was working uh, in London doing a play and... Uh, I got sent the script, I think, in about August, maybe, something like that. Uh, Greg sent me a long note via email. Uh, I read the first two scripts, and I thought, uh, I mean, especially the second episode with the chimpanzee, I just... I was just crying. It's that episode so, is it's, so well written, John. I remember reading so that episode. Funny. It's so Greg Daniels wrote it, and it's a, yeah. it's so well written. It is so funny and so pathetic, <laughs> and so you see how absolutely clueless and overmatched everyone is, and yet the the great sort of efforts on. All the, all the hope they ply into this doomed mission, which just couldn't have ended more badly. Like as as uh, Blanche Dubois said in the Streetcar Named Desire, things have a way of turning out so badly, <laughs> um, and that that just couldn't have turned out worse. But that's what's so funny about it. That's why I, I just thought this is just to watch this. It wouldn't even matter if I were in it, just to watch it going on. It's so, it's so pitiful that it's just the reading it and watching it those days we were shooting that. I mean, I just was sick from laughing just uh, how desperate it was, how how ugly and funny. It really is hilarious. I mean, even the chimpanzee's name, Marcus, had me dying. I know, it's, it's, it's so- perfect. It's so it's wrong, so everything's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> both, of, but yet it's so right because sure. everyone's so perfectly cast. Both of your characters, Dr. Adrian Mallory, F. Tony, spend mm -hmm. a lot of time with Steve. So can you share with us maybe some behind the scenes moments that the three of you had or the two of you had that stood out to you? Ben really makes me laugh a lot. and. I always love scenes where I wasn't really doing anything and I could watch what Ben and normally Don Lake were doing mm -hmm. because somehow in every scene, they somehow ended up next to each other. <laughs> <That's and true. laughs> so you know that behind your back or behind Steve's back or whatever, somewhere off off the camera's site, there's a whole world happening. I would start doing things when when let's say Steve was on camera and John was a little bit to his right and then we're in the background. I would do things just to try to get John Malkovich, the actor, to laugh. <laughs> And we would be, and Don and I would be playing because we knew we, John is such a good actor. He's so aware of the space that Don and I will be doing stupid little bits with each other. And John will come over laughing and be like, were you guys just playing a game while he was talking about the earth being destroyed? Yeah. And then the second I knew that John is aware of what we're doing behind him, it becomes like a beautiful game. There, one, of the, one of the things that I remember the most out of playing with Steve was we did one scene where... I'm supposed to get yelled at. And so uh, what happens is I mess up somehow. And the next scene that was written was him taking me to a room and we have a discussion about it. 
And in one of the takes, Steve goes, come here, come with me. And instead improvises this scene. Do you remember this, John, where he takes oh, me outside and he curses me off so loudly and so like in character, like his, the words barely made sense that we erased the whole other scene and we just kept this little part of him being like, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. us coming back in and that, that stuff is great. But I will say it is. And don't you say, don't you say like, it's fine or he got it. Oh yeah. 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 Don goes, have that go. I go, it's good. We're good. We worked it out. But I, I don't know if they kept it in, but it was, I will say that. Yeah. Yeah. I think they did. Oh, perfect. Did. It's been so fun playing with John too, because uh, to play, because all John's, character all this comedy comes from john's character so when you combine our two characters you could just leave us in a room together just talking and comedy kind of happens which is it makes me so happy and that's a testament to greg creating you know that yeah, is yeah it, that that's what i felt reading it it's just all the characters were so funny to me and just so lifelike in the wrong way sure but <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't really matter because the wrong way in the end makes it like us, like people. Mm. Uh, and, you know, generally we don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what's hilarious, I think. Yeah, it's it's so relatable and we're laughing because we're just seeing ourselves and the fact that Space Wars is actually a thing and I'm sure there are going to be so many similarities. <laughs> it's crazy that. how the thing is coming out, our show will be coming out as things are happening in parallel in real time, which has been so like they, they had announced that this is what our emblem looks like. So Greg is like, well, this is what our emblem looks like because we, <laughs> we had written it back when they announced it, or rather we, Greg and Steve and all of them were writing it back then. So it's been so surreal to see these things happen in real time. Uh, yeah. it's well, Ben, you, Ben sent last week, because we have a, several of us have a, a sort of uh, text group. And he sent, which I was just starting to send to everybody, <laughs> but he refused to send. And this was the real Space Force ad, which was, oh, yeah. if you weren't meant to live on this planet or some version therein. And I would go, well, that's true for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh-huh, are you talking to me? Uh, yeah, well, and that's the real ad. And when you look at this, group and these characters you go hey he can't be the social media person for space force he can't be the head of space force he can't be the scientist of space force but they are well i'm gonna use the hashtag that ben has used to close this out hashtag that's all i needed thanks for talking to me this is a dream come true i hope Thank you guys you, stay Naz. safe and uh, congrats on middle ditch and schwartz 100 percent on Ron hey we did it is it still there Fantastic. it's still there i just checked oh i can't wait thank you so Bye, much guys. my main concern is our head scientist this is the moon Flat, desolate. The surface is actually a complex topography. Okay, thank you, Bill, the science guy. My favorite scenes in the show are when the both of you are together, and I know you both are comedians. So I was curious, did you guys get to improvise any lines or scenes in the show? Yeah, and, and I think uh, some of the storyline came from our pitching too, which is so great uh, of the writing staff being open, you know, the black women, Asian men relationship stuff. I just love that. They're so sweet. Uh, there's something so sweet about us too, because it's so unlikely, I think, in the real world. And I absolutely love that. And all the dancing and stuff, we learn all that. We just like the dance instructor came up with it. Like we just and we just mm -hmm. did it the same day. So those days were really, really fun. Yeah, I love that stuff too. And I love, yeah, the writers were so, they had us in to talk with them a couple of different times to just mm -hmm. be like, well, what would you really, you know, how would you explore a friendship like this or a relationship like this? Um, Greg too, so open. I mean, there was a point where they had written some scenes for us that like, just didn't fully feel like where we were taking the the relationship or something. And so I said like, oh, I'm not sure. Maybe could we improvise around this? And Greg was like, yeah, pitch whatever you want. Um, so it really did feel like a, a true collaboration, which I know everyone says that, but 
I I wouldn't say I wouldn't lie. No, <laughs> was, and we all collaborated. <laughs> yeah, it's true because you can feel it while watching it. I feel like it, there's so much of you guys in these characters, and you both are just B-wham couple goals in my hey. opinion. <laughs> Yay. Is, there any, is there anything that ended up on the cutting room floor that you and Jimmy improvised together or Jimmy? You know what? Luckily, I think our scenes were pretty much all there, right, Tani? Yeah, I was really surprised and flattered at, at that because we did play around a lot, but really, I think because we met with the writers and played around with them, they wrote down a lot of what we said and they, you know, made it better for us. But uh, yeah, they kind of left our stuff intact and I, I was so happy with us. I did. I texted Tani about this. I did improvise one line that I semi oh, regret. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of uh, the car, the beginning, uh, the first car scene at the end of it, uh, when I was talking about my Korean friends and stuff, uh, and I said, yeah, and yeah, Grandma Kim was a bitch, you know, about about my buddy. But then that was really based on a story. That was a real Grandma Kim, and she was actually like really sweet. So now I'm sure my buddy's going to come after me now and beat me up after he saw that. Yeah, now that's <laughs> recorded forever, you calling his grandma a bitch. Hey. <laughs> Wait, Grandma I'm, Kim is very nice. Let me go on record to say that. Grandma Kim is not a bitch. <laughs> you guys heard it here first. I can't wait to hear Grandma Kim's reaction to this. Jimmy, you specifically, <laughs> I know you're always spilling the tea. Your character in the show spends a lot of time with Dr. Adrian Mallory, John Malkovich's yes. character. So what was it like really working with John Malkovich? Man, I think the first day for me and Tony and probably everyone that has ever worked with John Malkovich is like, I can't believe it. This is a legend. You know, I'm kind of nervous. I make sure I'm prepared. But then he just so disarming, man. He's just a chill guy. And he's a great storyteller in between scenes and between takes. So we quickly became very close friends. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> I had a little breakthrough. Well, not that, you know, I think he was very warm from the beginning. But in episode four, I say this fart joke line and I just remember John like kind of broke and out laughing in one of the takes. And I was like, oh my God, I made John Malkovich laugh. And I think from then on, I mean, we just became like pretty close friends and uh, I call him every now and then we have little Zoom happy hours and stuff. Uh, so it's incredible, man. And now I don't even see him as John Malkovich. He's just like a buddy. Yo, you're having Zoom happy hours with John Malkovich. That's amazing. Yeah, the whole you're, cast. Yeah, the whole we cast. Like it's the coolest thing. Happy hour. It's really yeah. cute. This whole cast is the coolest thing. Jimmy, you bring up your parents a lot in your stand up. And by the way, Good Deal is just so hilarious. Thank what you. What was your parents' reaction to like you working with Steve Carell and John Malkovich or everyone on this show? Well, so I think at the beginning of my acting career, especially my dad, he's quite vocal. He's like, ah, I hope this is just a phase. Go get a real job. And then when he saw some success, he made a complete 180 and was like, eh, so easy. You can do it. I can probably do it. And I was like, sure. You know what? Why don't you start trying to go to some auditions and you see how hard it is, you know? And then he started actually kind of killing it. So I was kind of happy for him. And then uh, I don't know if you noticed this, uh, but in episode nine, there's this older uh, Chinese scientist uh, on the Skype screen that's opposite John Malkovich. That's my dad. Does anyone know that? I think people are hopefully starting to. And I it's mean, not when a the secret, show comes but... out, I think a lot of people <laughs> yeah. come out. Yeah. And he was the most fun and he killed that scene and he was very funny. So uh, very happy for him. Uh, that is hilarious, Jimmy. Tani, what about you? What was it like working with Steve? Because your character has a lot of nice moments with Mark, General Mark Arnaird. Yeah, uh, a lot of nice moments with him on screen and off. I mean, some, some of those days, like Steve and I maybe were the only actors on set, you know, because they were kind of like a long setups or, you know, just us in the helicopter. And he's just the nicest, most regular guy. I was talking to him about my house that I had just bought. And he was talking to me about his daughter going to college, like just the most mm -hmm. normal everyday conversations. And then like, so sweet in the, um, like in the actual filming, like, you know, cause he's, he's the boss too. He's a producer, but like, I feel like in the first few episodes, I didn't get any acting notes or notes at all other than just like move your chin over here for this camera and so I was kind of like looking around being like am I terrible and they're going to replace <laughs> me or am I a genius what's happening here um but like I, and I think I asked him once I was like is what I'm doing okay like do you need me to do something different and he was just like do you do whatever you want and it was just such a like warm like he just you know trusted me and it, that gave me a lot of confidence 
Well, I'm going to go with genius on that one, Tani. Thank you guys so much thank for you. even sitting down and <laughs> talking with me. This is like a dream come true. Jimmy, thank you for your pasta recipes on Instagram. Oh, thank you. I hope you guys have a fabulous day and you're staying safe. And thanks thank so much. Thank you. Dad, I am so proud of you. My God, I have you. We're going to fall 14 the shit out of us. Space for spirit. <laughs> Congratulations on the show. I mean, this show is very much a satire, but what I love about both of your characters is we get to see some very real and tender moments between the both of you and Steve Carell's character, Mark, General Mark Arnair. Lisa, you specifically, I know you guys worked together before on web therapy, but what was it like working together with him now as his wife? Yeah, it was heaven. <laughs> because he, no, because he's so great. He's, I mean, such a good actor number one he's so funny number two but then as a person he is so professional and warm and welcoming and just you know and greg daniels too they were all just so nice in having me participate in this it was really great i have to say i really felt welcome I loved um, watching you guys on web therapy. And I remember watching an interview that you did where you talked about where he came up to you and he almost like kissed you. But now when you were his wife, I was like, she finally got to kiss Steve Carell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it had to be such a goofy one too. I loved it. I loved it. I don't want to give away too much about your character. Your character is so incredible, but it has some restrictions in this show, Lisa. So did you find performing the character restrictive at all? Well, I mean, I just ran different scenarios in my head and thought, now, if that's what's happening, does this work? Yes. Yeah. So I just, you know, made sure whatever I was doing, it didn't take that much work to, you know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's a dutiful Washington, D.C. military wife. So, yeah. Were there any behind the scenes moments that maybe we we don't get to see on camera between you and Steve that stood out to you or that'll stay with you forever? Um, stay with me forever? I mean, you know, the whole experience. I mean, it was mostly just that general feeling. He did say, you know, you should go off on this. And, and he gave me like, you know, different improv things to like throw out that I can't say. But um, that was really... That was really fun. That was funny. He was right and funny. You both are hilarious together. And you too, Diana. I mean, I know you're a huge fan of The Office, but what is it like having Octavia Spencer as your ma and Steve Carell as your da? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Very good. Um, <laughs> um, honestly, I don't know. I've, I've, I've definitely been pretty lucky in uh, my on-screen parents and you know scene partners uh Steve Carell is the is just the creme de la creme he's so wonderful and easy to work with um he's definitely made me a better actor same with Lisa my scenes with Lisa you know um and a lot of our scene work we did with Dana Reed and um Lisa who Dana is the director and just both of them really just pushed me to um just be a better actor and try different things and different scenarios. And um, I've been really lucky and I'm just, I hope I get to go back and keep doing it with them. Yeah, I definitely want to see more of this show. Was there anything that you learned, you know, from anyone on this? Cause this cast, I mean, it, it's star studded. So is there anything you learned from, you know, an actor specifically that you're going to take with you moving forward? Um, I definitely, uh, Steve is a very present person in his scene work. Like he's just, he's so there with you. Um, just in like the way he makes eye contact, honestly, in scenes was enough to teach me a big lesson of like getting into character and preparing for a scene and connecting to the person you're in the scene with. So I definitely have taken that with me and will continue to do so. We also, Diana, we also heard about this incident that you had before your audition that sort of oh, led yeah, the concussion. I was hoping you could <laughs> share that with us. Yeah, so I was in my apartment cleaning because I had bed bugs in New York and uh, I was on a ladder trying to dust something off and I forgot the fan was on behind me, whatever. I hit my head, blood, concussion, ER. It was great times. And then the next day I had to go to Los Angeles to have a week of audition, one of which was Space Force. And I'm um, really, really glad that I kept getting called back. <laughs> 
Well, I'm glad too. <laughs> you ladies are so great in the show. I can't wait for the world to see it. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, congrats thank again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. How are you handling this? It's a little chaotic. And you're not the most flexible person. Are you running? Keep up. Greg, congratulations on Upload on Space Force. Quarantine has been lit thanks to you. And so many people are so excited about Space Force. I actually pulled a quote from a comment someone wrote on social media I wanted to read to you. Someone said, oh my God, Michael Scott, Phoebe Buffay, Jean Ralphio, Frank Dunphy, and Sue Sylvester, this must be good. And um, <laughs> rest in peace, Fred Willard. But we wanted to know, how did you get everyone involved and what was the pitch? You know, it started with uh, Steve and I having lunch and saying we really should do another TV comedy together. And The Office was, you know, my favorite professional experience and being able to do seven years with him on that show uh, was just, you know, fantastic. So I was into it no matter really what the idea was. Uh, and then he took a meeting at Netflix and um, they proposed to him uh, to do something about Space Force. So he called me and said, what about uh, Space Force? And I was like, yeah, I'm in. This is great. And we, you know, we found it really funny to picture the real life general who has been given the mission of boots on the moon by 2024, which is, you know, a, a big, a big task. And uh, it will require a lot of science knowledge and creativity and flexibility. And, you know, we just sort of pictured this guy who hadn't really used all those all those you know traits in climbing up the ladder at the Air Force, and uh, it seemed very funny. Uh, and then you know Netflix made an announcement right away that we were going to do that show, which was a little nerve wracking. But mm. what it led to was um, John Malkovich's agent calling and saying, "Hey, Malkovich saw the announcement. Uh, he'd love to be a part of it." So that was you know fantastic. And then we um, we were able to write uh, his character in from the beginning. Um, as the, the head science advisor who's kind of plays off Steve the most, you know, and then you think to yourself, okay, well, a modern general has to tweet and they have to interact with the, the media. Uh, so we, we wrote this part for Ben Schwartz to be his media advisor. And then, you know, um, what's it like for him at home dealing with all this? And when we, we tried to put even more pressure on him with his family, uh, with Lisa Kudrow and Diana Silvers and, what's going on with them, which I'm not going to spoil, but is crazy. Um, so it was kind of like played out like that. And then, uh, we, you know, it's just, it's a comedy murderer's row, really. It's like, uh, and, and, and the highlight really was Fred Willard. And, uh, you know, his appearance, he only appeared a, a few times in the series, but they were really beautiful moments. Uh, and, you know, it, it, was, it was so um, sad that he, passed away but I, at least I, I feel like the last uh, you know stuff that he did was just as brilliant as his long career I was just gonna say it was like some of his best stuff really cool that that he's in this show like you yeah. mentioned obviously working with Steve I didn't know that the office was you know one of your favorites that you've ever worked on so that's cool to know um sure. people people know that you and Steve have worked together. And I feel like some people are going to go into this expecting a mockumentary style format like The Office. So can you explain what the ethos of Space Force is to us? Yeah. Sure. I mean, um, I think that people are, you know, at least when it was announced, I think people were expecting that it was a mockumentary set on a spaceship, you know, and uh, it, it's really nothing like that. And I think if you looked at the trailer uh, or just see the beginning of the show, it'll be clear right away that we're going for something different. The lead character, Mark Naird, is, is really nothing like Michael Scott. He's like this super good leader and very high integrity military guy who, um, you know, if he has any problem, it's being a little too inflexible. Whereas, you know, Michael obviously blew every which way, no matter, you know, what was happening to him. Uh, and the show is very cinematic. And the, 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 the scope of the idea of starting a new Space Force is just very grand and you know, we got a wonderful cinematography. We have beautiful music. Carter Burwell did the score um, with a full orchestra. Uh, Simon Chapman is the cinematographer. We had great um, directors. Uh, Paul King, the director of Paddington, you know, does the first few episodes. Dee Reese uh, from Mudbound is, you know, does some stuff in the middle. And uh, just everybody was 
you know, very high end. And um, so it's got, it's got a lot of beautiful sort of scope. You know, it's like a very, I guess it's sort of like a funny Apollo 13 movie in, in look. Perfect description. You mentioned how, you know, Mar General Mark Arnaird isn't like Michael Scott. And I don't want to give anything away, but he does have some Michael Scott-esque moments. Like, for example, in the trailer, he's singing Kokomo by the Beach Boys. It's no good by Toby, but it's amazing nonetheless. Was that done on purpose or in mind? Well, you know, uh, we, we certainly are trying to have this be a unique character. I think anytime people see Steve being funny and hear his voice uh you know there may be some memories of michael scott involved uh which is all to the good i think that was a great character also um but uh, you know once people get into the story i think that they'll accept this new character and see that he's being funny in different ways than michael was a hundred percent um yeah my dad was in four branches of the military so i really i know that he's gonna love this and i saw so much of him in it so i think you guys just cool. really yeah. nailed steve and i both have have relatives in the military steve's dad was in world war ii and so it, it was very important to us to be very respectful and to be making a show that people in the military would embrace and find funny uh you know and feel like they're laughing with them and everybody understands them yeah, and I felt that when I was watching, I was like, my dad's going to love this. So thank you for doing that. And cool. it's, just, it's really been cool, Greg, as a fan, just seeing you bring your comedy to streaming and just creating these worlds and upload is very, you know, cinematic as well. So congratulations on thank all you. your success. And thanks for making us thank laugh you. during this time. <laughs> oh, that's nice of you. Thank you so much. And, and uh, take care. 50 years ago, our country put a man on the moon. Well, guess what, kids? We're going back.